Hi everyone, my name is Bee and I work at the Hepworth Wakefield. This week I'm really excited to share an activity from an artist called Cynthia who is based in New York. Cynthia works for an arts organisation called Studio in a Storm and she's going to share an activity with us that she's been doing with young people in schools across New York. We're going to transform 2D paper into 3D forms and then we're going to use these to create paper sculptures. Experimenting is all part of the creative process, so I hope you have fun and enjoy. Hi everyone, I'm Cynthia Chen with Studio in a School. Uh, today we are going to make a paper sculpture. Uh, we can use printer paper, we can use any scraps that you have at home, like these um, flyers that you get from the supermarket. You can use these thin cardboard boxes from tea. You can also use uh, these envelopes that you get in the mail. If you have scissors, we can use them to cut. If you don't have scissors, then we can use our hands to tear or rip. We don't need any glue or tape, and we'll learn how to make the paper stick together. So first, um, I can cut this sheet of paper in half so that I get a smaller sheet. You can also tear this paper in half. So here, with this sheet, I'm going to roll the paper. So I'm starting at one end and I'm going to keep on rolling until I get to the edge. Okay. Now I have this small tube. Let's see what happens when I let go of my hand. Wow, so I see this curl in the paper. It can stand up too. I can put it down. Ooh, it has a nice spiral. So I'm going to put it on the side like this. Now with the other half of the paper, I'm going to fold it. I'm going to fold a little bit on this side and then flip it over, fold it again, flip it over, fold it again, and flip it over, and fold it again like this. Ooh, now you see the zigzag in the paper. So this is an accordion. Now I can also stand up. When we make a sculpture, it can normally stand up and we can see it from all different sides. I'm going to put this one inside this curl. Okay, what next? We can take a paper and tear it into a strip, or you can cut this. What can I do with the strip? So I can fold it again, but fold it the long way. Now, it's super straight. over here. Let's see if it can stand. Oh, nope. But it can lean on this. Or I can put it on top, like a road on top. Let's tear another strip of paper. Okay. If I want this paper to stick to itself like this, you can cut a slot. So I'm going to cut a, a short line in the paper. You can also tear it. Just cutting halfway like that. And then I'm going to turn this paper and fit it into the slot like that. Now it's staying. So the paper, you're putting it into the slot like that. Okay, now I have a teardrop shape. See if it can stand. Ooh, this one can stand. It can also go on the side like this. Where can I put this? You can also rearrange this sculpture. So I can take all of the shapes, and let's see if we can make a different sculpture with this. I have this curl, I have this tube. I can use this and put it over the tube. Ooh, and it's stained. It looks like this tube is wearing, oops, looks like it's wearing a scarf. I wonder if I can put it on the side. 
I'm gonna have it stand up. What else can I do? I can put this X on top. Ooh, and it's staying. Uh, I could put this long piece on the side. Let's see if it'll stay. If it's too heavy, it might fall over. Hmm, I wonder maybe if I could put this on the side, the zigzag on the side. Now I made another sculpture. So it's your turn now to make your own paper sculpture. Let's see what you can do. When you have created your own sculpture, we need to capture and record it. This can be an important part of the artistic process for artists and allows them to reflect on their work as well as share it with others. How you choose to document your sculpture can allow you to emphasise or highlight key aspects of your work. Take a moment to pause and think about your sculpture. Which aspects do you think are most successful? Perhaps you will decide to focus on the shapes and the forms in your sculpture and how the sharp angular forms sit next to the curvy flowing lines. Or maybe the most interesting part for you are the shadows that your sculpture creates and the contrast between the light and the dark. Once you've decided what aspect you would like to focus on, think about how you can draw or photograph your sculpture to record that and emphasise the most successful parts. I hope you've enjoyed exploring sculpture and getting creative. Do share your work with us as we'd love to see what you've been up to.